Hi all, Marker here with the Exiles. Um, so in this video, uh, fellow senior instructor Luke Ireland um, from the Exiles, who looks after our school up in um, Sheffield, will be showing some bastoncello. Um, now the video that Luke um, shot was for internal Exiles use, um, and he's allowed me to uh, to share it with you. So. Before I start rolling with Luke's footage, um, firstly just a little bit um, of background to the, to the video and what he shows. So Fiori sh uh, shows uh, bass and cello or, or short stick and he only shows four plays. Um, but because the Exiles study um, Fiori as a holistic and integrated system, we can use elements from the rest of the system and principles to um, support our use of the bass and cello. And Luke shows this in, um, in his video. Um, what Luke also shows is the use of um, a belt in his video for some of those plays um, as well. And there is precedent for this. Fiori shows the use of a cap, for example, from uh, that you'd wear on your head um, in some of his plays. Um, so there is precedent for the use of uh, improvised weapons. Luke also explains um, some context around the, the, the stick itself and why it was carried and why it might be a, a practical weapon to, to use. So um, I'll shut up now um, and, and just um, play Luke's video for you. Um, but again, a quick thanks to him for letting me use this footage um, as part of this, uh, this vlog series. So, Aston Cello, for you guys who have not seen one before or not seen the section, it's basically a small stick, it means little stick in Italian, Aston Cello. Um, so why did they carry them, what are they? Basically, in the time period, they were used as a kind of mark of office. Yeah. So it's a little bit like a swaggy stick, a little bit like a sort of field marshal baton, that kind of thing. Um, they carry them right back to Roman days, and if you look at various sort of 14, 15, 16th century manuscripts, you'll find them cropping up. Uh, a great example is Sir John Hawkwood in Firenze, in Florence. The fresco that they painted for him because he couldn't be bothered to pay for a statue, <laughs> he's carrying a bastoncello. A plain one, but quite a large one. So they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, decorated, undecorated, turned, unturned. Sometimes some of the later ones have a steel cap on either end, which makes it a little bit more offensive. Other times it is just plain stick, anywhere from about a foot to about three foot, could be ten to be. Um, and you often see knights in full armour or noble people in full armour holding one of these, either on horseback or not, yeah. So, the context of in Fury's manuscript is he shows us four plays. Two of them are stood up, two of them are sat down, hence why we've got chairs, okay. So, we start off with the two sat down plays, yeah. So the interesting thing about that is, why is he sat down? Yeah, a social gathering of some kind. Yeah, he's out and about, he's around town, he's sat down, he's at some sort of function, he's minding his own business. So that tells us something already. It tells us that we're not talking battlefield, we're not talking tournaments, we're talking everyday, just streets, sort of self-defence mode. So first of all, your mum was right in telling you to sit up straight, because if you start back up, Lazy and loosey goosey, and he comes to stand you, you're in a much worse position to then getting up and assaulting him back. Yeah? Whereas if you sat nice and straight, like a good guy's Italian noble, yeah? chest out, shoulders back, when he comes to attack you, you've got a good cover. Yeah? And this is just the same as Sick Master Dagger cover. Yeah? So if you're doing it with a bass and cello. Now the thing about it is, you don't want to be too passive. So when he stands you, you don't really want to stay sat down for very long because what's he going to do next? He's either going to press in, or he's going to carry on stabbing you on a different line, or he's just going to grab the stick. Remember, it's a stick, not a dagger. Yeah. So it's even less damage if he grabs it. Okay. So if we do it and we be a little bit more aggressive with his entry, then we can come to see something like that. Where now I'm in a good position, and from there, you start dealing with his 
out the arm, his elbow, and doing something about the way in which he's holding it. Okay? First thing we can do is start to get, taking control of the dagger arm. Elbow down, hitting him in the face with the back of his elbow. Yeah? It's blunt, so you're not going to penetrate him, but you can concuss him and start striking to different targets. Whatever target opens up. Yeah? Okay? So we'll do that again. Probably is in the relaxed position. Comes in, you're getting your cover, rising up into it. Elbow, make sure you keep control of it. Don't let go because he's going to snap you back. Control the elbow and start attacking. Whatever target presents. Okay? Makes sense. It's just to go over the end there. So we've got that six master ready. We're up into it. Where you deal with the dagger arm depends on sort of what angle you land at. If you're here, then you can go for the elbow, fine. If it's a little bit more over to your left, you can go first master dagger, all that sort of stuff. If he ends up with a really straight arm, you could go for one of the later planes of first master dagger there, which then leads nicely into the take down that's in the Bastion Cello. So you just deal with a dagger arm in whatever way sort of presents itself to you. Okay, yeah. makes sense? Cool. Right, uh, so that's dealing with the dagger arm and striking him with the stick, but the thing is you kind of want to get that dagger out of his hand as quickly as possible. So you've got a couple of nice disarms with a basket shallow <laughs> from that six master position. One is an inside line, one is an outside line. So if we, I'll demonstrate them both first and then we'll take it in terms of practice each one. So it comes in, you get that defence there. Nice and solid, nice and stable. From there, we're going to turn the baston cello towards his face, okay? So the left hand goes up and the right hand comes in over his elbow. Just turn away, Simon. Once you've got that position, just push forwards with your left hand and you get a dagger strip there. From there, you can then start attacking with your basket cello, however you need to. Okay? And again, comes in, turn, push, you should get that strip. If he starts trying to fight you or whatever, you can still start hitting him at short range there, flat to the back of the head. Start using your other hand, don't forget you've got another hand to actually assault him with. Okay. Yeah. One more, a little bit quicker. There. Okay. We'll do that one first. Okay. You good? Yeah. You know, that there, nice and snappy. It's a lot easier than it looks. It looks quite flashy, but it's really simple, and you can do it really fast. So then, come in one more time. You've got that there. Yeah. So like I say, there's lots of different things you can start doing. I tend to like grabbing him by the head and then start hitting it. Spin him around, start hitting him there. You get a lovely back of the head smack and it's quite disorientating to the person. <laughs> yeah. And it means that you're well away from that left hand as he starts to try and punch you with it. Yeah. So try and punch me with the left hand now. You can even control them if you want to, if you're in a multiple opponent sort of thing. Start using them as a human shield or choking out the glass and jelly. Right, so next one. Uh, I might be better doing this from a couple of different angles. But similar sort of thing. So for this time I'm now going outside the line. Okay? There's a number of reasons why I might choose it. Maybe he's more over that side and I'm struggling to get around there. Whatever, yeah, whatever it is. But this time left goes down and right comes up, okay? And I'm going to be spinning out with um, two to one footwork, okay? There. If I can, I'm going to retain his arm because then I've got some sort of control. I can start hitting him with the stick, hitting him in the hand, hitting him there, or opening him up for different attacks and boosts. We do it from the other angle as well. <coughs> so there, leg down, right up. 
spin round, you've got that control. Start hitting him, hitting him, hitting him, or opening him up and hitting him again. Okay? Make sense? And one more, a little bit faster. Right, so other options from 8th Master Dagger, yeah, or 8th and 9th Master Dagger. Well, so we've got, we've got things like the Ligadora Satana. So, if I wanted to get him into a Ligadora Satana, we've had the last I'd be going there, turning his elbow, and coming in there to put him into the Ligadora. Yeah? Make sense? Okay, I'll do it from the other side as well. So if he comes in, we've got this stop there. If I start snaking that hand in there, make sure you push forwards. Don't let him still stab you. Yeah? So we're still going forwards, it's forward momentum. Yeah? There. Vasconcello, inner elbow. If I smack him sort of on the side of his elbow there, it should get a nice turn into his arm. Okay? I'm maintaining this pressure so it doesn't collapse and then I'm into the Ligadora Satana. I can either use the stick to help put it on, pull my arm out, put it on with just the stick, or you can pull the stick back out. It doesn't particularly matter, okay? But the other thing is, what were I just sat on? My chest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, if I'm sat about in some Italian piazza, what am I probably sat on? It's probably a stone bench. Fucking have something like that. Yeah, smash his head into it as you're spinning round, and then start hitting him. Yeah. Use whatever you whatever you've got. And if that happens to be a stone bench or even a wooden chair, it's fine. So there, hit there, so it's kind of like an uppercut with it. Spin it in, and then you're into the big door. If you just keep spinning around, you're going to put him on the floor or into the bench. Yeah? Make sense? Let's say that one more time, a little bit quicker. Yeah, not too quick. <laughs> <laughs> there and there. And like I say, it, I kind of do different things with the stick. Sometimes I leave it in, put it on a the crank there. If I turn that, it's going to dislocate the shoulder. Sometimes you can pull it out and start hitting him with it, or just leave it in. And then start doing various nasty things to him from there. Okay? I like this. Anybody notice a problem with, or possible problem with, that eight mass cut up there? If the table in the way. Yeah. Table? If you uh, you're a vet, then. No, forget the table. Unless he's a. Apparition <laughs> of the table. Yeah. That is a problem. Okay. Yeah. I'm concentrating both there and it is in a very natural position for him to start hitting it. Yeah. So again, that advice stands. Don't be upright, don't be presenting a chin because he'll knock you out. Yeah. Tuck up, turtle up a little bit. Shoulders up, heads down. I can see him, I know where he is. If he hits me, he's probably hitting me on top of the head. I'm going to have to soak him up like a big boy and then start hitting him as much as I can. But why did it the head back man? Yeah? You might get crushed. The important thing is, you've got control of that dagger, boom, and you're doing something to it, okay? End of the day, you've got a stick, he's got a dagger, he's still got an advantage, so you need to be nice and aggressive. If you start trying to block that, or fanny that, you do it yourself, yeah. Deal with this, yeah, and this. Suck it up, hit it, start going in, down. Yeah. We've also got standing up plays. So, the two standing up plays, the first one just shows a position like that. Okay? 
and he says from there he'll throw him to the ground. So it's not a choke. You can choke him out from there, but he's choosing not to. Okay? He's throwing him to the ground, a bit like a neck throw, whichever way. Okay? So that's great, but how are we getting into that position? Oh, he's an arm, by the way. He's not going to back around at the minute. So how we get into that position is not just going to let you walk up to it and put that lock on. Yeah. You've got to get in there, you've got to be able to close that distance as he's trying to attack you. Yeah. So what you can do, you don't want your stick out because he's going to grab it. Yeah. It's not a sword, it's not a knife. You can just grab that stick, grab it with both hands, then he's probably going to take your stick off you. Yeah. But that's not a good idea. Remember you've got another weapon, just like the dagger, yeah, you've got another weapon to match your hand. So if you're coming into some sort of pose, you can use that, start striking into it, just as you would strike into Abizari, and then you've got that pose and cello there. Yeah? If you're holding it halfway down your fasting cello, you smash it into his neck and then lock it up nice and tight. Okay? If you're holding it as though you are hitting him with a stick. It means you've either got to hit him there or just hit him and flip it. Okay? So you're either hitting him with palm up, which is a bit weak to be honest, or just smack it into his neck and flip it around there. Okay? Ideally, you're going to be halfway down the last and shallow. Comes in, start striking, you start striking his hands, striking his joints, soft and roll. And then you're in. Okay? Four minutes better. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, right. So, try not to let him grab it. But what if he does grab it? Say he say goes wrong and he gets a hold of it. Yeah? What do we do? Okay, so it's basically a similar principle to half sorting and to the dagger counters. Yeah? Get two hands on it. Then I've suddenly got better leverage. And can start striking with either end of it or even with the middle. Yeah? If he gets two hands on it, just go outside. If we're there, we're even. Go on, you wrestle it off me, I can't, I can't take it off you. I can take it off you now. Oh. So if you're on the outside of the stick, don't let me take it. Yeah. yeah? <laughs> you just get better leverage. Yeah? And if you're in back close and you've got it, Start hitting him with either end of it. Bang, 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 bang. Okay? Have a little go at that. You can use that as an improvised bastard cello. Now, the thing about it is, it is a flexible weapon. So, if he's stabbing at you, you don't want too much kid in it. Because <laughs> that is going to kill you. Okay? So recognise and be aware of the limitations of the weapon you've got. But if you choke it up a little bit, you've suddenly got a much more solid stop. Okay? So from there, you've got the same disarm that we just did. Okay? If I whip it around, you've got the same choke that we just did there. And you've got it again. If you want to the manuscript. Yeah? If it's something like a belt, it's got buckles. I'm not hitting with the buckle end. <laughs> yeah. Saying that's a buckle end. Whack. Whack. <laughs> Whack. Yeah. yeah, buckle him with it. So if he stands away, that's in hurt. Yeah, and it's at least going to get him defensive. Okay? It's not going to kill you. It's, it is a belt, it's not a bastoncello, it's not a dagger. So you need to get aggressive with him after that. But it still works. Same with that one, yeah? Now again, if you've got the buckle end, you can hit him with that, but it's not going to do that much damage. So you need to start doing other things.
is another takedown, but this time it's from low. Um, yeah, no one's coming. <laughs> right, okay, so we're into all this. We've, we've gained entry, however, we've gained entry there. Yeah. From there, it's smashing it between his legs and going through his neck in there. Yeah, so I'm kind of making him sit on it a little bit, pushing as I do, and from there, it's going to be a takedown. Okay, the more I push and pull, he's going to go. So again, the key to it is softening him up, because if I just go for that, <laughs> you're going to be bastard, absolutely bastard. But if you can soften him up on the way in, maybe getting him bent over or thinking about something anyway, yes, and then start smashing it in. And when you smash it in, really smash it in with the forearm, bone, into the box, in and up, and then turn and twist. And from there, you go possible longer. Pull in. Okay. It works better if you've got it in the middle of the batting shell, obviously, because if, you, if you're on one side, you're not going to get it. Yeah. So you do kind of have to be middle of the batting shell. But again, if you're in this sort of position, if you're striking and you want to go for it, you can use your body to put it in position, move it about. Yeah. Do that one handed. It's better than juggling it because you're probably going to drop it. Yeah, move it back. Pull it in, pull. You can smack it in sideways if you end up over this way. Smack, you go. Yeah? Smack, you go. Okay. How have you done it? You've kind of softened them up a little bit. And then go. That isn't really going to work with this. Yeah, because I can let go and grab it, but then I can't be sorry with it. I'm not, you know, I'm going to hook it over. It's, it's not going to work. I can start hitting him with it and clearing the line. That's okay. But again, is it any better than just doing that? No, not really, because of the type of weapon it is. I can't really assault him as violently as I wanted to with a soft weapon. Okay? But what is it good for? It's really good for somebody who's trying to sell a machine in, yeah? Because now he can't pull away. Say he takes it and starts pulling away, he can pull away with that because it's a solid weapon. Yeah, it up here. Don't get me wrong. And yes, you're going forward, and yes, you're being aggressive. And yes, you're trying to grab him as soon as you can. But if you're not quick enough or whatever, you can miss that if he's really going for it. And he might then start changing direction, changing angle. The one advantage this has got is it locks in almost immediately. Yeah? See that? So now put away. You can't. I've got to do. Okay? From there, you start coming up into that arm break. Yeah? Snap. However you get it, there, it can, you sometimes end up under it, or sort of around it, it doesn't particularly matter, I'm not too fussed, you go in there, and then from there, snap, straight there, okay? So I'm going forwards as soon as it comes in, and locking it on his wrist, from there he's not going anywhere, yeah? If you can't get under him, you can start going around, okay? Yeah, makes sense. Yep. Have a little go at that. 